Hey, this is Michelle Getzinger here, and I can't wait to show you this soup. It's one of my favorites. It's called butternut squash soup, and um, can't wait to show you how to do it. So with butternut squash soup, it's a pretty simple soup. You can do it. Um, it is a little bit time consuming though, the way that I do it. So you take a butternut squash and you could peel the outside of the butternut and then um, take the guts out because it's hard like a pumpkin. And then you could chop it all up, but I am not nimble enough to do that. And the butternut squash to me is too hard. So what I do is I cut it lengthwise like this and then um, split it open and I put it on a pan and I roast it. I also roast two carrots and I leave the skins on and I roast two onions. Um, I use two different types in this soup as well. So I have one Vidalia, one white. Again, it doesn't matter what kind of onion you use. You can use anything you want. And I throw it on a pan. I'm gonna show you how I do it. So I'm just gonna show you the ingredients that I have set out. Um, again, you don't have to use all of these. Um, we have some rosemary, thyme, and sage. And then I also have a little bit of chili powder, salt and pepper, and olive oil. Um, these are green onions that I'm gonna use at the end to garnish the top. And then this is really the bulk of your soup right here. I'm gonna go ahead and get my cutting board. Remember, this thing is like cutting into a piece of wood. It's like rock hard. It's real easy for your knife to slip, cut off a finger, cut yourself. So just be careful. Hopefully I won't do that while you're watching. So the first thing I do is I cut off the tip of it. Get a beautiful color. And I come over and I cut off the butt. And I know there's chefs out there that are like, oh, good Lord, we're gonna watch her cut her finger off. Um, hopefully I won't. Try to go this way. These little buggers are tough. If you ever try to carve a pumpkin, that's kind of what it feels like. And I think when they do these on the cooking shows, you know, like Martha Stewart and whatnot, I think they all have like pre-cut or something because they never show this. I want you to see the struggle. The struggle is real when it comes to cutting up squashes and maybe I'm just weak. Try and bust her open for you. There we go. That's what you want. So if you were going to do this without roasting it, you would peel all the skin off and you chop it up and then you could either boil it, you could saute it. But um, I prefer it this way because I love the way that the butternut squash caramelizes and same with the onions and the carrot. Then that way it's much, much easier to manage when it comes out of the oven. So I roast it in the oven for an hour at 425 and I drizzle it with um, olive oil, salt and pepper. Um, these spices don't come in until later. I prefer to use fresh spices, but you know, you don't always have them. So uh, we're gonna use the dried ones. So just like, just like a pumpkin, it smells like a pumpkin too. You probably use pumpkin. I've used acorn squash. Just made a mess. Um, I, I prefer the butternut squash because of the consistency. It really does have a, and maybe that's where it gets its name from, a more buttier, buttery consistency. Okay, so we have these guys here. I'm gonna go ahead and throw them on my pan and then sweep all this into my sink. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut up the onions. Now with the, um, the onions, it's really simple. You're literally just gonna skin them and you're gonna half them up and throw them on there. It's gonna be so pretty. If I can get it off to the hair. And these Vidalias, these are my favorite. I feel like I can just bite it like an apple. And then remember, these white onions are the ones that make you cry. See if I can do it really fast without crying. Put all this stuff in the sink. There we go, two beautiful onions. Just gonna cut them in half, set them aside, and then you're gonna rinse your carrots off. We're gonna leave the skins on. Because normally it is more bitter if you leave the skins on, but in this case it doesn't really matter because it's going to go in a soup. So you just cut the tips off and you cut the butts off. And just like that, go ahead and put it on the pan. See all those beautiful vegetables? 
I'm going to go ahead and take my olive oil. I'm just going to drizzle it along here. You don't have to worry about the underneath of the butternut squash because you're going to be taking off that skin anyway. Ooh, and those onions are getting me now. So I'm going to go ahead and then I'm going to get my salt and pepper. Move these guys over here. And again, I'm all about just a pinch, you know? Cover it like you do with the olive oil. That's going to be your flavor. Same with the uh, salt. It's really going to help all these vegetables kind of sweat. So we have our onion, is, our, our oven is set at 425. And lucky for you, I got up early and I roasted them because it takes an hour. So I'm going to pull out what I've got. And that's what it looks like after an hour. And I'm going to go ahead and put these in. Don't touch that. And after one hour, that's what it's going to look like. So you're going to want to let it come to room temperature. I'm going to bring this over here so you guys have a closer look while I get it all prepped and ready to go. I'm just going to brush off my cutting board here. The first thing you're going to want to do is grab one of these babies. Now they are going to be hot, warm. Um, that's one of the downsides of, of roasting it. I like to try and separate the skin as best as I can so I can get as much of the meat as possible. But sometimes the best thing to do is just kind of scoop it out. This is such a, um, a great soup for me. It, it's so warm and creamy and it feels like eating like a broccoli cheese soup texture but without the cheese and the, and the dairy. This isn't pretty, by the way. This is reality cooking. It's a hot mess. You get your hands dirty. Don't be afraid of it. Just get in there and scrape it. Now I've done this once with um, half acorn squash and half butternut squash. I wasn't a huge fan. It actually was much, much thicker than I thought it would be. And I think it was because of the acorn squash, even to the point where diluting it with the, um, the broth didn't really help. So I think this is the best way to do it. And I do throw the carrots in there because it's the same color and it's a nice, um, a different texture. It helps keep it all, all the same texture. And it also um, gives you some added nutrients. Okay, so that's pretty much what you want to do. You can see this is how much you get from one half of it. I could probably scrape it down a little bit more. And if for time reasons, I would do that. But since you guys are watching, I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'm going to go ahead and put that over there. And we have, now this side didn't cook as well as the other side because I wasn't able to split it correctly, like right down the middle in the half. So this one is unfortunately not, this side is not as done as the other side. So it's a little bit more firm. All that means is it's really not a big deal. You're just gonna have to um, cook it a little bit longer on the stove to soften it up. And you get to see my favorite kitchen utensil today, which is the emulsifier. I got one when I first got married and I didn't know how to cook. And I was like, oh, what is this thing? I'm never gonna use this. It is the most used kitchen appliance that I have, minus the coffee grinder. Now I think as I do this more and more, Maybe I'll cut it up, but it's so hard, so maybe it comes out a little bit easier. You guys find out a better solution to getting this out, let me know. Usually it's much smoother than this, guys, but this is what you can anticipate happening. And after my last cooking show, I've decided I'm just gonna stop using the term voila. So hopefully you won't see me do that again. Like I said, it's, it takes an hour to make this soup, but really it doesn't take an hour. It really takes you more like 15 minutes. All right, let's see my cluster of a hot mess here. I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna start throwing it into the pot. All right, let me get some stuff in there. Here we go. Just drop her all in there. This one I'm gonna leave out because it had some skin on it. is such a great comfort food. All right, so we got it all in there. I'm gonna rinse my hands off. Okay, you wanna keep it kind of at a medium heat so you don't burn it at the bottom. 
Okay, so I have three different types of vegetable broth here. There's, actually, this one's not a vegetable broth. It's a coconut milk soup base. Um, normally, what I would tell you to do is just use like, just a standard vegetable broth. But I have these three. Once you open them and they're in your refrigerator, they can go bad. So I need to use up this half container and this half container, and I'm going to use this little splash of this. Um, that's the whole thing about learning how to, to cook like this. You have to use what you have at hand. You're not always going to be able to go to your refrigerator and whip up a meal um, and have everything you need that's in a recipe. So you need to learn how to you know, be flexible and use the things that you do have. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pour in the rest of this vegetable broth. And you can kind of, you want to give it a shake. You can kind of hear it starting to sizzle down there and I don't want it to burn the bottom of the pot. So I'm going to go ahead and dump in the vegetable broth. This is that creamier, um, no chicken broth, but it looks like chicken soup. That's because they put that turmeric in it. And I won't need to add turmeric to this at all because everything is already orange. Go ahead and set this aside. And then anytime I get a chance to get a little extra protein, I, I do it. Um, and this broth here is actually very creamy. And that's what we want since we can't put any dairy in it or any heavy creamer. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some of this vegan broth here. And then I'm gonna add, not all of it, but just a little splash of this coconut milk. I, that's where I would say use soy milk, coconut milk. Um, you can use the soup base. It's specially made for this. I'm just gonna add a little bit of this in there. Again, you gotta use what you have. I grab myself a spoon and we're gonna give it a little toss. see all those big pieces in there. Now, one butternut squash, medium size, two carrots and two onions and some vegetable broth. This is, this is about the size to feed about four people. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out my favorite kitchen tool. Comes in two parts, you screw this on. This is what goes in the dishwasher. Go ahead, turn that up a little bit. Now this can be messy. So how you use one of these is you stick it into the pot. If you lift this out, it's kind of like having a mixing blade and the batter goes everywhere. It's going to be the same thing. So you want to make sure it's underwater. Go ahead and plug it in. Remember, it's got a big blade, so don't touch it. Put your finger near it. Don't let your kids play with it. Stick it under there. Turn that baby on. And you just want to get in there and you're going to smash up and grind up all the big roasted carrots and onions and is you probably should not wear a white shirt. Another quick tip with using the emulsifier, do not use this to mash potatoes. When you mash potatoes with a, with a masher, it smashes them up. When you mix it with this, it binds it together and it'll make it very gummy and glue-like. So always use a potato smasher, not an emulsifier when making mashed potatoes. This takes the longest. I can tell by doing this, I'm gonna to need to add a little bit more of the regular vegetable broth. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab another container of that. So this is what I'm talking about improvising. I um, actually don't have any more of the vegetable broth I wanna use, and I don't wanna use any more of the, the protein and um, the coconut milk. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna add a little bit of water to it to kind of loosen it up. Go ahead and set that aside. <laughs> So about four cups total of a combination of broth, liquid, whatever you want to add into it. That's about what you need. All right, I think 
we're good for now. But I'm not gonna put this baby away yet because I'm gonna need it again, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a stir. And now is the seasoning time. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this down a little bit. Get my spoons. And I'm gonna get my spices. Okay, again, we're gonna do sage, rosemary, and thyme, and a little bit, just a little bit of this chili powder. Before I start adding spices, I gotta know what the, the base of it tastes like. It's good. It's sweet, I can taste that Vidalia onion. It needs a little bit more, a little bit more salt to it. I'm gonna go ahead and give it another sprinkle. Remember, when you're not dealing with processed food, um, you're really just dealing with the basic flavors of the vegetables that you're using. So you, you're gonna need to salt and season everything. When you're buying things at like Panera or wherever, you know, everything's been seasoned for you. So you just gotta make sure that, that it tastes good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead now and add a little bit of rosemary. So if you were doing this and measuring it out, I'd say probably about a half a teaspoon. You know, a little bit of thyme, just give it a little shake. Even less of the thyme than the rosemary. Rosemary is a pretty strong flavor, so you wanna watch it. And the flavor seems to come out a little bit more, more when you cook it. Um, the longer it's in there cooking, it's like the oils come out of the, the spice. And if you're cooking with dry herbs, is different than cooking with fresh ones. Fresh ones are always stronger. Oh, it smells good. Sage, that's the smell of Thanksgiving to me. So probably less than a, a quarter teaspoon here as well. And then before I add any chili powder to it, I'm gonna give it a nice stir. And I'm gonna taste it again. Like I said, this is one of my favorite soups. Look how thick that is. It's like um, like a porridge. Oh yeah, that's really good. All right, I need a little bit more salt though, and a little bit more pepper. And I'm gonna add very tiny. I'm not a hot person, but uh, this little bit of heat in the back goes a long way. But just, just a sprinkle, tiny little sprinkle. And if you're crazy and you like it hot, then go ahead and dump the whole thing in. But I don't recommend that. So go ahead and give that a stir. And then we're gonna taste it one more time. Then I'm gonna show you the finished product. Very good. So while this is gonna sit here for a minute, I'm gonna cut, chop up the garnish so you can see what it looks like when I have it all plated up. And my favorite thing to garnish it with is those um, little tiny, beautiful green onions. All right, let me get this out of your way so you can see. Now, when you're cooking, you don't need to always have new you know, plates and whatnot. Keep it as simple as possible for you because cooking three times a day is difficult to begin with. So use as few dishes as possible. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get two of these out because I really like them a lot. Okay, I'll give them a little rinse. Get that out of the way so you can see. They have a little bit of a flavor to them. If you don't have fresh green onions, you can use those like canned French's onions. I've been able to find some gluten-free ones. Um, they've been real nice little crispiness on the top. Uh, honestly, if I can, I always like to use the fresh, fresh garnishes. Another good thing to put on the top would be like pumpkin seeds, although I hate pumpkin seeds myself. I'm not a huge fan, but 
you know, it does taste good when you have them on top. Um, also, the other thing you can use is sunflower seeds. It makes a nice little garnish as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get this one seed out of here. Right away. Just give them a nice little chop. And then I'm going to go ahead and get the ladle, and I'm going to plate it up for you so you can see the finished product. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead in there and give it one last stir. That's about the consistency that you want it to be. You could um, emulsify it a little bit more to make it a little bit smoother, but I like more rustic soups and things to be chunky, number one, because I'm lazy, but number two, I think they're a little bit more filling. So go ahead and put that in a bowl. I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple on the top because I'm a saltaholic. Get one more spoon. I'll put a little bit more salt on it. You can sit, serve this with like a nice baguette or some, you know, toast or some crackers. Serve it with a salad. There's a lot you can do, um, but it's almost a meal in itself. So thanks for watching it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them down below and uh, see you next time. Have a great day.